Hello and welcome to another video by Haste Computer Repair. And today we're taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkPad X260 laptop for use in 2023 and onward. And this laptop in particular features a Intel Core i5-6300U CPU, two cores, four threads, and it supports DDR4 2133 MHz RAM. It currently has eight gigabytes installed and we are limited to one DIMM slot as we'll see later. And this processor supports Intel HD Graphics 520. And for storage, we have this ADATA SU635 240 gigabyte 2.5 inch solid state drive. And other features of this laptop are an Intel dual band wireless AC 8260 M.2 card for Wi-Fi, which features Blue Bluetooth 4.1. And we have a 12.5 inch HD 1366 by 768 display panel. And we have a six row spill resistant keyboard particular to this generation of ThinkPads with the chiclet style keys, something I don't mind too much. And it features all the secondary functions of any modern laptop. Also features a two tier backlit system. And we have a Mylar Surface touchpad that is quite intuitive with three buttons up top, which is the model that I prefer. And of course, the typical red track point if you choose to use it. And off to the right here is the fingerprint reader. The right I.O. on the laptop features a microphone and headphone input, USB 3.0 always on for charging devices such as cell phones, SIM card reader, 4-in-1 SD card reader, RJ45 Ethernet port, and the Kensington lock. On to the left I.O. we have rectangular power input, there's an air grill for the CPU fan, we have an HDMI port, mini display port, USB 3.0 times 2 there's the slot for the optional smart card reader, which we don't have that installed in this particular model. Here's a port for docking stations on the bottom of the laptop, and we also have some areas for passive air cooling here, here, and here. Right here would be the air intake for the CPU fan, and right here are some slots opened up for the speaker. And there's two batteries in this laptop, one is the external 3 cell, and we'll take a look at the internal 3 cell in a moment. The bottom and the top of the laptop feature glass fiber reinforced plastic for your regular amount of ThinkPad durability. Here's an example of the 720p webcam. Now before we take a look inside this laptop, we're going to have to disable the built-in battery in BIOS. So we'll shut it down, turn it back on, start hitting enter until you're greeted by this menu where you'll press F1. And once in BIOS, we will navigate to the config tab, down to power, and down to disable built-in battery. We'll hit enter. And do you want to proceed? Yes. First up, we'll remove the external battery. And next, using a Phillips head screwdriver, we'll remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. Now, using something like a stiff, flat plastic guitar pick, we can begin scoring along the palm rest to remove the back panel. You may need to take extra care when releasing the little plastic clips, just in case you don't break anything off. And that's a relatively easy experience to access the internals of the laptop for maintenance and service. Just in case you forgot to disable the built-in battery, you can always unplug it from the motherboard with this cable connection right here. Starting off on the left, we have the 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD bay. And like I said before, we currently have the ADATA 240 gigabyte solid state drive installed. Now, when you're servicing this or upgrading, just be wary that this is a cable connection to the motherboard. And even though there's a little metal plate holding the connection in place, I've been in the situation where I've received laptops where the connection is broken or impaired. And unless you have soldering skills or motherboard repair skills, it becomes a motherboard replacement. And here's the three cell internal battery that we were just talking about. Over here, we have the single RAM slot. And even though that does have its limitations, meaning that you will never have dual channel RAM, you can install something like a 16 gigabyte stick. That should give you enough performance for general use and beyond. And if you wanted to apply new thermal paste to the CPU or clean out the fan, you just have to remove these four screws, lift up the heat pipe, being careful to also remove the little ribbon cable that powers the CPU fan. 
and I've already done maintenance on this particular X260 so I'm not going to demonstrate that but I'll save it for a different video probably the SSD install. Over here we have another M.2 port and this can house a WWAN card for extra wireless access. Now you would think that this would also house a M.2 solid state drive like many other ThinkPads, but the product specifications don't specifically list it as being an option. Uh, since we have it open, let's plug it in and see if it's recognized in BIOS. As you can see here, no, it turns out not an option. So that's unfortunate, but life goes on. While we're in BIOS, one little tip is to, to navigate over to the security tab and go down to IO port access. And especially if you're buying a used ThinkPad from an office or organization, you want to double check that everything that you want is enabled such as wireless access, the RJ45 Ethernet port, Bluetooth, memory card slots, microphone, etc. Be sure you go check this out before you go down the rabbit hole of troubleshooting when you don't see it popping up in Windows. So back to the motherboard, here we have the M.2 port for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. And I won't go over everything else because it'll get a little bit too deep into the technical side of things. However, if you do have any questions about general maintenance or replacing different parts, please feel free to ask in the comments and I'll lead you in the right direction. Now, even though the X260 does have some limitations like we discussed, there's still a diverse amount of stuff that you can do on this laptop. For work, you can easily use Office 365. This is something I do for my day job, and I think it would be absolutely no problem for casual workload and video conferencing. You can, of course, stream any HD video on YouTube, Netflix, etc., Amazon. And I do imagine that you could do some light video and photo editing with something like Movavi Video Suite 2024. Definitely accessible if you're sticking to the max, maybe 1080p footage. Otherwise, with a solid internet connection, you can get to looking up all the important pictures that you need for reference or for your blog. And I would imagine if you're a developer or programmer, something lighter like Linux or something Unix based would be a good option, especially for stretching the life out of a system like this. Now to test out some games, I have an NVMe SSD adapter connected to the X260 with my Steam account loaded up, and I also have a USB mouse connected as well. The first game we'll test out is Left 4 Dead 2. So we have full resolution at 1366 by 768 and a mixture of settings basically around medium. Okay, so initially we're running around and we're actually reaching up to 60 frames per second at points and dropping down to early 40s. Uh, I'm going to make a prediction and say this game is totally playable, but let's shoot some zombies and see what happens. Yeah, it almost goes without saying that this game will run perfectly fine on the system and you can definitely have a lot of fun with it. Now we're going to quote unquote stress, stress the system out with Tomb Raider 2013 running at 1366 by 768 resolution. And I put the graphics settings to low just so we can achieve a playable frame rate. My favorite part of Tomb Raider 2013 to test out on a variety of systems is this last sequence of the game, just because it offers everything that you'll, whoop, uh, just because it offers a variety of different scenarios that you'll run into in this game. And also there's a lot going on in the screen. During this more graphically intense scene, we are actually reaching over 30 frames per second, which is perfect. And the pre-rendered cutscenes are always going to look pretty smooth. I would definitely call this a standout game for optimization, and it's actually performing a lot better than I expected. Now playing something retro like Chips Challenge, uh, you of course would have no problem doing this. If you're like me, spent hours playing this as a kid on maybe like Windows 2.0, the built-in speakers will get you by in a pinch. But depending on your needs and taste, you may benefit from connecting a headset or Bluetooth speaker. So I definitely recommend this laptop for use in 2024 and onward, especially if you just need something lightweight for travel, general use, general office work, or something that's not going to stress a system out. Just for a size comparison, this is my ThinkPad P52 laptop. To be fair, this is a giant workstation laptop. It serves a totally different purpose, but just in case you're wondering how big this X260 is, 
Here you go. So let me know in the comment below if you're using a X260 in 2024. I'd love to know how it's working out for you and if you would also recommend this for somebody else. So as always, I hope you enjoyed watching the video, I hope you learned something, and I hope you have good luck with your refurbished technology. Thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.